And there we go. Hello, and thank you for stopping by. Yet another edition of the Masters of Reviews channel of YouTube featuring uh, John Nille, State of Georgia, Michael Komarov, Brooklyn, New York, Jay Terrio, Louisiana Beer Reviews, and I, Thomas Metal 75, for Massachusetts Beer Reviews. Today, well, last week was Christmas. And our good buddy Jay thought maybe Christmas beers would be a really interesting topic. So I called today Christmas in Review. Yeah. Uh, gonna, I guess, um, chit chat about the holidays. Um, and drink some beers uh, that are either Christmas, Christmas in theme or winter seasonal in theme and uh, reminisce on uh, holiday season 2018, 2018 in general. And now that we're in 2019, we can certainly look forward to even bigger and better things on the channel, hopefully. So without further ado, I would like to introduce John Nille. And what beer have you brought this evening, John Nille? All right. Well, <clears throat> it's a winter beer, but it might as well be a Christmas beer because it's only available this time of year. It is the Samuel Adams Cold Snap. Uh, it's a white ale with spices. What spices? Who knows? They don't list them. Um, it is 5.3% alcohol by volume and 10 IBUs. Excellent. And... What did Michael Komarov bring this evening? I brought from Harpoon, their winter warmer, which is kind of a winter seasonal, has winter in its title, 5.9% um, alcohol, 23 IBUs, and it says on the label, cinnamon and nutmeg holiday ale. Okay. Can I see what it looks like again? Interesting. Oh, yeah. I've had that one. I like that beer. Interesting. Excellent. Uh, Jay Terrio to Louisiana Beer Reviews. Which holiday winter themed beer do you have this evening? Well, today is the tonight is the ninth night of Christmas. There's 12 days of Christmas. This is day number nine. A lot of people don't realize there's 12 days of Christmas, but you've heard the song. And uh, I'm not going to go to the lower night ward like the New yeah. Orleans song says but uh this is white christmas all right it's from samuel adams they use orange peel cinnamon and nutmeg it's 5.8 percent alcohol and it's eight international bitterness units and the best buy date is in april of 2019 i thought in 2019 they were supposed to have flying cars when i was little yeah. they said they would have them by 20 by year 2000, so I don't know what's going on. Technology yeah. backwards. All right. Um, I'm trying to decipher the date on this beer of mine. It says a whole bunch of things. However, I am drinking from the uh, uh, Prairie pra uh, Park. Holy crap. Prairie Artisan Ales. Got a little tongue twisted there. Oh, yeah, I've had those. Beers. This is a variant that they do on their on their Prairie Bomb uh, Imperial Stout. This is called uh, Prairie Christmas Bomb. And this is an Imperial Stout brewed with spices. And 13%, so that's a giant beer. I'm going to share a little bit with some family members here. But um, Prairie Bomb is again prairie artisan ales it's a year-round beer this was 9.99 these things are not cheap to buy just for 12 ounce bottle so i thought it'd be nice just to buy it one time and try it so prairie bomb they do a lot of different variants of it but the standard bomb is imperial stuff that they aged on that they age on coffee chocolate vanilla beans and ancho chili peppers and then they have again different variants this one happens to be with some other christmasy spices so looking forward to trying that so, I say if John and Nile, while I crack open this beer, if John and Nile is ready to examine uh, his beer, uh, let's hear all about that and hear about uh, how the uh, holiday treated John and Nile this year. All right. So, 
Sam Adams Cold Snap, one of their seasonal beers. All right. Um, hazy, light orange color. The aroma, really not much there. Smells like a, a wheat beer. I'm not picking up any spices on the aroma. To be honest, it smells quite dull. So here's to hoping it tastes better than it smells. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. And it does. You're getting um, a nice wheat breadiness. Um, it's nice and medium with the carbonation. The body is relatively light. You're not picking up any alcohol. The spices, I don't know what the spices are, but I'm kind of getting like a – a ginger note, um, maybe a, a slight cinnamon note, but it's very light on the spice. It's just mostly a wheat beer with a little something extra that you can't really quite make out, but there's obviously something in there. The finish is crisp. It's refreshing. Um... There's just really not much to it. Um, another one of those Samuel Adams seasonals that, uh, for me, just kind of falls short. Uh, it's not bad at all. It's it's good, but it's. Um, I think they could have done a lot better with this one. So I'll keep sipping on it and give you a rating in a little bit. But, you know, it is what it is. It's an okay seasonal beer from Sam Adams. What, what else did I expect going into it? Not much. All right, yeah. So many, so many beers that Adams puts out on a on a yearly, seasonally basis to really have perfected any one thing uh, over time in their sixty uh, different kinds of plus beers they do. However, obviously, uh, stuff like Sam Adams Boston Lager they've perfected that really well. But it's kind of hard to do that stuff when you have 50, 60 plus beers in your portfolio. So sometimes it's going to be hit and miss. But um, let's see if. Harpoon Winter Warmer from Michael Komarov uh, does. Okay, there's uh, what it looks like. The head is kind of nice. I like um, when you can see nice lacing and the head retention does come right back. At least it shows that it is craft, which most people would consider harpoon craft, I think. Yeah. Um, color is kind of... Um, Dark, very dark orange with kind of like a reddish tinge to it. Let me get the nose on it. The nose is almost all nutmeg. I don't get any of the cinnamon. Wow. There may be other spices in the background. They said on the bottle it was going to be nutmeg and cinnamon. I'm getting straight nutmeg. If there is cinnamon, it's in the background. It's not in my face. It's not directly there. Let me give it a taste and see if there's nutmeg in the flavor as well. Cheers. It's definitely spicy at the front, the first taste you get, and you're getting some of the malts as well as the spice on the um, first taste. Um, it's sweet, but not in a cloying way. Um, it's a little bit on the watery side. Huh. Golly. I mean, it's not watery like some other things we've had in the past where it's really watery, but it's a little bit watery. Um, I mean, it's not bad. I don't think it's going to be one of my favorite holiday beers I've ever had, but it's, it's okay. I'll sip and reserve judgment for later on my final. Okay. Excellent. We'll come back once again to Michael Komaroff in a little while. Next, we must hear about Jay dreaming of a white Christmas with Christmas, white Christmas, uh, Sam Adams. Okay, hold on just a second. Um, well, it poured with a little bit of smoke, and then um, it, let me pour a little bit more here. And the head didn't last too long, that white thin head. It's cloudy, it's golden, milky golden, it's... Um, the aroma is uh, some mild spices like uh, 
what they say, cinnamon, nutmeg, and uh, coriander, whatever, those kind of things. Um, and some other um, kind of like wheat bread. If people have eaten a lot of white wheat bread, there's even a brand called white wheat. If you get, if people go out and buy that brand called white wheat, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. And uh, mm, the flavor, I spent years since I had this. The flavor is, um, oh yeah, a little lemon. I think they said lemon, cinnamon, lemon. And lemon, the spices, the yeast, um, the white wheat bread, the water, because I always find wheat beers have a little tap water flavor. Because look, all beers are made with tap water, all right? It's just that the wheat beers let the tap water flavor come through. And tap water does have a flavor, and it doesn't all taste the same. Um, depending on what town you live in. If you live in Flint, Michigan, it could really be an um, exotic flavor. But um, <laughs> but anyway, um, it's um, fluffy bodied like you get with the wheat ale, the wheat ales. The, um, medium body, a uh, medium dry. It's, um, yeah, it tastes like that two row pale malt blend. That's Samuel Adams. Um, they're kind of like, like I told John and Neely a couple of weeks ago, they're kind of like Taco Bell. They just take the same few ingredients and they mix them around and then they have, you can make a lot of different products from eight, eight ingredients. So it's kind of like that. Yeah. I think the two of our beers, uh, are probably more similar than they are dissimilar. Oh, I would, put, I would put money on that. Yeah. And I'd win. <laughs> okay, Eric. Now you, you got to, Eric's, Eric's, I want to predict Eric's examination of this beer is going to be the bomb. Wow. Well, that's all our beers away. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, that okay. is nine dollars a bottle. It better blow them away. <laughs> yeah. Everybody else, we're going to cut. Holy shit. Just like with everybody else, we're going to come back for for uh, some more thoughts and final ratings and grades. But uh, for now, yes, let's get to Ferrari Artisan Ales, their Christmas bomb. So I have poured it into a stout glass. Hopefully I can get a little bit more swirl and a little bit more head out than in a really more of a narrow rimmed glass. And that's pretty much what's going on. In light, I'm getting some dark ruby red tinted, but it's pretty uh, pitch black, and it has that coffee, dark roasted, uh, like that coffee khaki, dark looking brown head to it, with yeah, 13% alcohol lacing like that. It looks like fudgy. It looks like fudge, yeah. And the nose on that is very uh, dark chocolate, fudgy, big chocolatey notes big roasty kind of espresso notes to it uh syrupy molasses um i don't think it's really brown sugar i think it's more on the molasses side of things i guess i am getting some cinnamon um dark fruits the cherries the plums the raisins your purple or your dark dark red fruits <coughs> um maybe some vanilla maybe some nutmeg but really yeah really it's sort of a cinnamon spicy uh big old imperial stout there with your typical coffee and chocolatey notes so uh yeah this one yeah, the prairies are always bombs are always made with ancho chilies so i'm really curious to see how the ancho chilies play into this beer Cheers. Oh, can I mention something real fast? Take me 10 seconds. I haven't taken a sip. Sure. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, uh, sure. I did some pre drinking with um, E40 honey oh. flavored malt liquor, 10% alcohol. Uh, it was a 40 ounce bottle, but you know, my friend David was helping me drink it yesterday, and I saved it. Captain saved it. I hear some John and Neely echo, I think. Try that, John. Try to mute it. Let's see what happens. Nice glass there. Um, so I did the e I finished off the E40, which at, mm. I'll say this very quickly. Yeah, go ahead. The more I drank it, the better it got, which I expected it to be the opposite. So that was surprising. And secondly, I um did a little bit more of the Andre extra dry 
and John and Neely knows. So I, I did a little bit, and I love that cap, that resealable cap, because when I popped it today, it was like it had just been popped the first time. It just popped in all the smoke. I said, well, this is amazing. So that was an ingenious device. Okay. That is it. cool. Excellent little uh, winter uh, holiday season uh, events going on with Jay Terrio. Very excellent. And this beer yeah, it is a big beer. It really is. It's not quite drinking of 13%. So for it being a big old imperial stout, the uh, drinkability is kind of uh, scary for how high it is. I'm definitely noticing on the phone, I was just talking about being curious about these ancho chilies. Ancho, I never heard of that. Um, yeah, it's 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 um not a hot hot spice. It has a lot of peppery zing to it. It's a mild to medium kind of a spice. If you don't like spicy foods, you would probably still like this. It's like a I don't know how to describe it other than it does have the pepper, um, uh, ve vegetable pepper kind of a flavor to it, but it does have some just mild to medium kind of zesty notes to it it kind of brings out the cinnamon and this nutmeggy um all spice these kind of different um spices it really helps make them shine on the tongue so that's the first thing that i get now don't you find that those peppers if they're not hot let's say spicy hot but yeah. don't you find those peppers a lot of times there'd be like a savory aspect to them yeah that's why i say it can almost kind of kind of taste like the actual vegetable i can picture eating the actual vegetable too yeah yeah um okay. so, so then definitely i'm getting a fudgy kind of a chocolate the the body is a little bit sticky i'm getting that fudgy dark chocolate mixed in with that espresso coffee and some vanilla kind of notes to it as well and the finish is of that of that sweet sort of molasses -y kind of a kind of a character to it it's a long lasting finish it's not sugary sweet it's definitely as sweet as dessert or an espresso kind of a drink that you might get at a coffee bar would sort of taste in that regard and then after a little while it does dry but initially it's it's wet as you would imagine for the finish to be it is pretty well carbonated it's prickly enough on the tongue but it's about as prickly on the tongue as you would imagine a uh, bourbon county stout or any other kind of a bigger imperial stout this one is really awesome and in and you definitely feel afterwards in drinking the beer the ABV more so than you perceive really hot, hot heat of alcohol. So there's like really nothing particularly that like screams to me this is Christmas. Like particularly, there's not a huge un uh, amount of any other real big spice blend to make me think of like a fruit pot or like a fruit cake or something like that or figgy pudding or whatever they eat or like an old fezzy wig from uh, Samuel Adams. However, this is a big old imperial stout. Take your time with it. It's an excellent drinker, excellent sipper, and I'm um, pretty happy with how something like this is drinking. So excellent so far. There is a dating on the bottle. Before I shut up, there is a dating on the bottle. It says 27481TH1 thank THX Miss 1007. 29518. I have no clue what that means. So if anybody that's knows what the, in the Prairie Artisan Ales means, please comment on that at some point. So that's I'm going to be quiet for a little bit. I'm going to sip on this. This is drinking really good. So I want to go to Michael Komarov. Let's go randomly to Michael. Okay. And as I'm drink as I'm drinking this, I'm getting a little bit of mild hop bitterness on it. A little bit. Yeah. But it's not you know, again, it's a more of an in the background kind of taste. Wow. It's, it's, it's very drinkable. I mean, it goes down pretty easy. Um, it's not astounding, I guess, is the best way I can describe mm. it. I mean, it's okay. And it's intended as a winter warmer, so I guess it has spices in it. Um, I would have liked to have had a little bit more cinnamon, but yeah. it's here a little bit. But the nutmeg definitely is the primary 
um, spice that I'm getting. Um, it's it's okay. How much of, was that? About a dollar seventy nine? No, less. I bought a case of it in Costco, so it was like a dollar seventeen a bottle. Whoa, baby! So, so it was an okay price. Again, I normally don't like buying cases because that means I have a six pack of four different beers, and it takes me a long time. Looks like Jean H. Pierre has arrived. Uh oh, with some white wine. Up there. So I will add him to our list. Okay, Jean, whenever you show up, hello. There is Jean H. Pierre. Hello, Jean H. Pierre. Good evening, good evening. Can y'all hear me pretty good? Yes, sure. Sir. Sure, darling. Okay. <laughs> What's going on in Mobile, Alabama? What crazy beer have you brought to you? Uh, uh, nothing crazy. Uh, Sam Adams Winter Lager. Oh, oh but damn. damn. Third Sam Adams beer of the night. Woo yes, yes. Uh, what, are, what were the other Sam Adams beers? Chris uh, uh, Michael, or uh, sorry, uh, Jay's Ring of White Christmas. And John and Ray, cold snap. Cold okay. snap. And I have another Massachusetts beer, Harpoon Winter Warmer. Yeah, and Vermont. Again. And Vermont as well. Prairie Christmas Bomb, 13%. Eric, drink three of those on air. Do it, do it. No, don't do it. That will be $30. <laughs> no, thanks. Um, so yeah, let's go to let's go to Mobile, Alabama. Let's go. Let's go down yes. there and hear about the winter lager from John H. Pierre. Yes, um, this beer is a Bach, I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, it is uh, looks real. I I did a I I had it last year and first time and, and of course I reviewed it and um, I liked it and uh, this uh, what's the other beer uh, Jay is it uh, is that uh, Mardi Gras Bach by Abita? Do they still make that? <laughs> Oh, yes, and I was thinking about that beer today. On this very day that we're talking together, I was thinking about Mardi Gras Bach. Yeah, so it has a very caramel flavor. Um, the last time I had it, still the same. Um, and 5.8, not bad. I mean, you, you can drink three of these, and you feel good for the night. That's just me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, this would be perfect. Like I said, uh, maybe it's a bit too cold. I took out the freezer and I put it on the counter for about maybe five minutes before we went on it, before I joined you guys on air. So uh, maybe I would say maybe good, maybe 10 minutes or so, kind of let it kind of get a little somewhat warm, kind of get a little more flavor for it. Uh, but yeah, the caramel flavors in this is really good. I like the malts. Um, this is a very good, you know, box to have, you know, this time of year. Yes. It's been it's been a little while since I've had that Samuel Adams winter lager. Eric, I'm gonna go ahead and give my score. Go right ahead, sir. And I'm trying to figure out why Michael come up is wearing a Delaware Blue Hens pullover. I'm just curious. Oh. That's where my daughter went to college. Oh, Delaware. There you go. Oh, I like Delaware. I like that state. Uh, that there's a lot of cool people I know that live in Delaware. So, um, uh, did Joe Flacco play for one of those? Schools? Yes, he did. He was the Delaware. As his senior year was when my daughter was a freshman. Okay. Yeah, and then they went, then they won the national championship that year. Right. No, Delaware did not win the national championship. Uh, Wait a minute! Whoa, 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 whoa! Time out. They did win the national championship. Yeah, but at the division, right? division two. Right. And no, we okay. kind of count it not the same way. Division. Wait. Wait. Division one. Division one A. That one B. Yeah. One, whatever. Right. One double A. Uh, we don't get. We don't get. We don't credit it. <laughs> Which they call now what the we FCS? Punish, hey, we, pun yes. we punish the small schools. We allow Alabama to win their championships when they do, but we don't credit Delaware when they win. But guys, but guys, check this out. Those why are even, why did I even know Alabama? Those schools. I mean, some of the best talent comes from some of these smaller schools. You know. Oh, yeah, right. but, they're, 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 no, he was great, and he won. He won a Super Bowl with the Ravens as well. Right. right. So see. But anyway, I shouldn't have brought it up. But I was just it's okay. That's where my daughter went to college. So there you go. Yeah, UCF. Go. No, you meant to write LSU. I'm sorry, John. Lee, you meant to write LSU. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna get. I'm gonna. I, I just saw that, and I, I haven't been to Delaware in a long time, and I, I'm like interested in it. All right. So here I go. All I want to do is a zoom, 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 and a boom, boom. All right. So um, 
it's so John, uh, John, other than the caramel, caramel at the beginning, what else are you seeing in that Sam Adams beer? Um, I guess the 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 um I love the look of the color. It really is. It's really nice. The uh the, the the sort of ruby brown type color, reddish sort of caramel. It, it's like a copper color sort of color. Um outside of that, it's it's malty and it's a little bit of sweetness to it, but it, it's just right. Like I said, I wish I had kept it out a little bit longer. If it warmed up, maybe the booze would have come out a little bit more on this. So yeah, but Jean, you're not going to get a whole lot of booze with that kind of thing. I know, I know, but no. still, but right. if, if it's on the counter, I took it out of the freezer, left it in there. Maybe I left it there for 20 minutes. You know, I think the beer that I'm drinking is like a B plus. No, White Christmas by Samuel Adams, everybody. Yeah, White Christmas. It it might be an A minus because of the nice little yeasty thing going, <laughs> but yeah, like it has this um. I don't know. It's a B plus. It's very good. Seasonal it's beer. This is a seasonal beer from November to January. They went to lager. So That's Jay, great. what number is B plus tonight? Since it varies a little. Not with me, it doesn't vary. Okay. What it is with other people? But what number. Um, I mean, oh. it wait, wait, wait. I don't mean it varies with other people. What I mean is other people have different parameters. Yes. Yeah, parameters. I'm not because people could take that as I'm saying it like a a, a ridicule. I'm not. I'm not. Um. 89. Okay. I got it. Whoa. Yeah, I think that's a fair score. But it's kind of like you had a, a child and they went to college and high school and then college and they always made an 89. And so people said, your child did well. They did well. But they were only in the newspaper once. And that was the local paper. You know, it's just it wasn't that remarkable. But they did. They did fine. They had a Chevrolet Cavalier, and they lived in an okay neighborhood, and they made B pluses in in the state of Louisiana. Any state wouldn't matter. Everything they did in their whole life was like very good, but never excellent. Mm -hmm. Include All right. I mean, so the beer gets gets by just a little bit, yeah. Yeah, it's nice. I mean, it's fine. Okay. We, we we know from our first uh, talkings here tonight with John Nelly that he's not doesn't sound like he's too enamored with this cold snap. Uh, how does that translate into a rating there, John and Nelly? All right. Well, it's uh, it's got some nice wheat flavor. The spices are really not coming through like they should. I don't think. It's good, but it's on the lower end of good for me. It's an 83 out of 100. So, oh, it's good. good, but it could be a lot better. It's just kind of a typical Sam Adams seasonal beer for me. <laughs> All right. Uh, sucky beer. All right. Great. No, it's it's good. It's good, but it doesn't stack up. It's, it definitely doesn't stack up to, to yours, Eric. That's for sure. Oh, wow. I think uh, I think the white Christmas that you had, Jay, is better. Uh, I think the one that Michael, the Harpoon, I think they put out better seasonal beers than Sam Adams. And the Sam Adams Winter um, Lager, I liked a lot better than this. I gave that one an 88. This one's just doesn't have doesn't have the flavor to stack up to some of the other ones. I tell you, yeah, um, John and you're like everything Harpoon puts out is pretty much better than Sam Adams. But uh, I, I agree. We have French Hawes Beer Reviews watching us live. Hello, sir. He is asking if we've, if, if uh, you guys have had uh, accumulation white IPA by New Belgium. Love the lighter tasting sea, uh, winter yeah. seasonal this beer has. Yes, yes. I don't I've think I've had that. I have not. It's and kind of like what I'm drinking tonight. It's very good, not excellent. And we got Craig Swenson, as usual. He said a little bit earlier in the chat that he is drinking Long Trail Double Bag, a double alt beer, not specifically a holiday seasonal beer, but very good this time of year, 7.2%, and, and he says very malty, A+. plus. Can't get it in Louisiana, sad to say. And then uh, French Haas, he's sure. loving those college references, uh, Ron. And uh, Craig Swenson there says, uh, 90s rap references from Mr. Terrio. Mm. Right. Go. 
My eye, my eye. Why you shot me in the eye? You should have shot me in the body. But uh, that's my story, G. Yeah. All right. yeah. But where, where, where are you in a rating, uh, Michael Kormoroff? With that? I'm going one point more than John to 84 oh. with my harpoon. Harpoon winter warmer, yes. And I think in my rating system, 84 is probably one of the lower Bs I could I could give. I guess. Is it a straight B or is it on the top of a B minus J in yours? Where would an 84 fall? A B mid range. Okay, it's a B. It's a B. It's it's a B. It's for what it, it's it's for what it's intended. And if you like nutmeg, it would probably raise it to a B plus because it's really nutmeg forward to me. Wow, I'm, I'm getting some of those uh, flavors right now with the winter lager. Now that it's warmed up a little bit, some of those, uh, you know, like I said, spices, whether it be nutmeg, uh, some cinnamon, a little bit in there, you know, like you put into a pie or a sweet potato pie, you know. And that's what I'm getting with this right now. Now, now that it's slowly beginning to warm up right now. Excellent. Good stuff from TV Rambler, Giant Pierre. Um, yeah. oh, this can prairie I give you my beer. Score? Can I give you my score? Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. I'm giving a score right now for the winter lager by Sam Adams. I'm going to give this a B, which would be, I guess, uh, an 8.2. I guess that seems about fair. Sounds fair to me. Right. Okay. So. 82, 8.2 from Winter Logger. Yep. Eric, yours is going down pretty smoothly for 13%. You're almost finished with it. <laughs> well, <laughs> to be completely honest, I, I have not poured said He's, whole he still has more in his bottle. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm not I'm not completely stupid. Although you could see it's easy drinking, to be completely honest. It just doesn't have it just doesn't have this alcohol like like real detectable alcohol burn or anything so it just sort of you you almost don't even feel the alcohol in, in on the palate which is kind of interesting about this one but the more that i'm drinking on this prairie bum the more i'm really and, and, and it warms up a little bit the more that i'm really starting to notice that this ancho chili pepper influence of the beer, it, it definitely rounds out, or doesn't round out, that's not the right word I'm thinking of. It, it definitely brings all the spices, all the other spiced elements of the beer to the forefront. Somebody mentioned in one of their beers, uh, it could have been Michael about some cinnamon in, I, in his beer, and I am noticing cinnamon as well as the nutmeg and the coriander or not the coriander the nutmeg the allspice some vanilla um coffee really dark again really like espresso roasted coffee really fudgy chocolate and it's just got a sticky body to it and i've seen beer reviewers talk about the christmas bomb and, and talking about how i guess it's maybe it's just the bomb prairie just in general that it has such a strong influence of that chili pepper but again i think it just brings all the spices together to the forefront which is really nice um i don't know what to rate this beer um at 9.99 okay there's some more spice at 9.99 i don't think i would buy this i think i wouldn't buy this all the time once or maybe even twice at absolute most a year for the Prairie Bomb series. Um, I guess a 94 is what I'm gonna rate this. Yeah, right, right down 94, I guess, yeah. And there's no way a 94 beer is worth $9 a bottle, no way. No, it's, I, I, I honestly, I, I, again, I look at it in, in context of, I bought a single bottle. My store, the store that I went to didn't have four packs of this. I bought a single bottle. It is Christmas in the theme and I said, you know what? Why not just get one really nice bottle to uh, break in the new year? I mean, I'm glad they didn't one, have one. Will not hopefully kill you. There you go. No, one will not kill you unless you're uh, trying to watch your budget. Yeah, right. Um, but what you was do the have to like the four pack you do, like pepper, you do have to like the pepper influence of this beer to get any to get um, to uh, you. Uh, this pepper influence, what I'm trying to say, 
is like one of the bigger stars of the show. So I can understand some beer reviewers that talk about it that way. So if you're not really a spicy fan of like, you know, spicy foods or chili peppers, you might kind of be turned off by the prairie bomb stuff. But if you don't mind that stuff or you really do like spicy food and you want a desserty beer, Imperial Stout's your game. Yeah, this is definitely one to try at some point. Prairie Bomb is always really there? highly rated, so go and try it if you can. Yeah, but I mean, you could buy a lot of peppers for nine dollars. Think about if you went to the grocery store, how many hot peppers you could buy for nine. Yeah, but this isn't Massachusetts pepper reviews. It's Massachusetts beer reviews. <laughs> God, say, come on now. What? Uh, what's the ABV again, Eric? Thirteen percent. Okay, what about for for uh, that's an imperial or. Uh... Oh, yeah, a totally Imperial Stout. Yep. Okay. Imperial Stout brew with spices. Okay, cool. So there you go. Um, Talking about rap music since she made that comment, do you know that punks jump up to get beat down? Oh, uh -oh. My God, man. That, that um, like memories, man. <laughs> that's memories right there. <laughs> just remember that punks jump up to get beat down. Um, so this is supposed to be Christmas in review. Oh, right, so Christmas. We talked about some Christmas beers and some winter beers. Uh, does anybody have anything uh, good and memorable to talk about as far as their holiday seasons gone? Christmas, um, New Year's. How was everybody? Uh, and how'd everybody do ending the new ending? Uh, twenty eighteen. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now I was going to say we went to Texas. We went look at the wall. The wall. Oh, the wall. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah actually, we actually took pictures by it. It was fun. You know? huh. And uh, But it wasn't much to it because it, it goes like 20 miles and then it just stops. Mm. And I was like, well, I could just walk around that wall, you know. But um, <laughs> it was fun. David and I, you know, you know, the guy with the big beard, Carla P. We drove all the way. And we were when we weren't arguing and yelling at each other, we had fun. Um, and then we came back and we did a follow up video. We were talking about how when you're on a trip, everything's always going wrong. You know, there's people driving in the left lane and blocking the highway, and everybody's getting frustrated. But we were said, "Oh well, oh hell," you know. I mean, we bought a bunch of beers and uh, we took a lot of photos, and we went to two breweries and. Um, you have to expect there's going to be some kind of like um, controversy and irritation. So um, we did a follow up. Like I said, we did the uh, Schlitz malt liquor. And then he came over yesterday and we did that E40, 10%. <laughs> and uh, we didn't know, we had a hard time putting a kind of getting a handle on it, but um, it, it was good. So the holiday, my daughter came over and I, it, it, and it, and we had a good time because my daughter and I reviewed um, the uh, Bacardi Black. And then we did uh, some beer, a huge holiday beer from Trader Joe's, which was really good, by the way. So, yeah, I would say the holidays for me, Christmas and New Year's, were very good. Very, very enjoyable. That's it. Excellent. Uh, John and Nilly, how... How's the holidays going for you? How did the holidays go for John and Nelly? <clears throat> Had a much better Christmas. Um, well, Christmas was a lot better than this beer. Let's just. Um, <laughs> oh. <show> <laughs> it was. It was good. It was. It's always good to see the family. Um, lots of good food. Lots of fun. And uh, but I'm glad it's over now and life is back to normal. Yeah. Can you say the same, uh, Michael Kolmoff, is life I had, I had, I had, normal after the holidays? I had a good holiday. Um, I, like I said, um, nothing earth-shattering went on. I did some in-family beer tasting. My daughter and her boyfriend came over, and we had some beers, and it was fun. And um, normal stuff otherwise. It was a good time. Relatively uneventful uh, New Year's in New York City? Normal stuff. Normal stuff. Yeah, I would agree with normal stuff. Usually between um, uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas, the cousins and I usually do some kind of beer tastings, whatever people want to bring over, we, we drink. Um, 
I did not get a chance to open that gingerbread stout with the family. However, I did open it the following the following day, and I did do a review of that beer because I I kept talking about it, and everybody wanted to see it. That was part of the beers. Part of, that was two, one of the two beers that our buddy that used to join us a lot, uh, John Walker, sent to me. Oh uh, wow! He sent a two bomber bottles from the Hardywood. Um, Craft Park Brewery in, I think they are in Richmond, Virginia. I mean, one called, uh, why, I think it was called uh, Merry Christmas. And the other one I aged for a year it was this gingerbread stout. A little bit different sort of style beers, not so much uh, ancho chilies and spices. And spice. That was more literally shred up gingerbread, so that was good. Um, New Year's, I went over to a buddy's house and tried a lot of different beers that I ended up coming home with. Founders Double Trouble, and there was a Founders beer. It was like a 12% that was, I forget what it's called. It was called a Better Half. That's what it was. It was some kind of a, a maple syrup barrel. Oh, yeah, Curmudgeon's curmudgeon Better Half. I, I did a review of Curmudgeon's Better Half. That was a dynamite beer. People did not like that, so they figured, oh, I'll bring it home. I'll put some in the fridge, and I'm going to age some. And but so you that like was New Year's, um, just... I mean, kind of uneventful other than just trying other beers and hopefully m more of that happens in 2019. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that hopefully we can do we can do wild card for about three weeks every month, er, uh, three other Wednesdays every month. And maybe we can do and come up with a theme once I, every I, month. I like that idea. Of the month in 2019. I like that idea. And um, I think next month. We ought to do, but it, this may not be applicable to everybody else. You know, to everybody else, it may not apply. But I was going to say, carnival beers because, uh oh, Jean dropped off. He'll be back because I I could get like Jean's talking about the uh, beat of Mardi Gras Bach, and there's some other carnival beers that are made around here. But I don't know. I mean, like Massachusetts and uh, New York and Georgia, they probably don't really have carnival, so it's hard to. It's hard for people to relate to that. Right. But over here, over here, I'm watching them make king cakes today. And I was thinking yeah. to myself, I was thinking to myself, it's kind of early for king cakes because it's not even 12th night. But you know how these stores do, they always jump yeah. off the gun. So. so yeah, we could definitely talk about that off air and brainstorm and those things. But um yeah. yeah. So I'm glad everybody's uh New Year's and Christmas and holiday season was good. And glad to be in 2019. Let's see what we See how how many new faces we can we can uh, meet in 2019. See if we can get any new people on the channel. It's always fun to grow the channel. Maybe uh, Craig Swenson will join us one day. I'm still yeah. trying like hell to get Bart Robinson live on a channel with right, right, hey, right. Maybe it'll happen 2019. Come on, Bart, let's do it. So uh, I'd say on behalf of Masters of Beer Reviews, Jay Terrio, Michael Cormoroff, John Anile. And where the heck did uh, John H. Pierre go? John H. Pierre. Uh, cheers. And keep tasting those great beers. Till next time. Peace. Cheers. Yeah, and I was going to ask him what happened to his holiday because he didn't describe the uh, the uh, Jean Pierre. Hey, 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 hey. Jean Pierre, what? Jean Pierre, what? Yes. What about your holiday? experienced real quick before we leave tell us about your yes, good holiday it was pretty cool uh went to my sister-in-law's house a lot of good food good drinks had a great time and then on uh, new year's uh eve i was uh just in the house watching movies and uh and that was it uh didn't go out and then new year's day drinking a lot of wine and uh, did anybody eat cabbage yesterday i did uh, no. There was some people who were doing cabbage. I was mostly doing some gumbo. And, uh, Boom. Boom. Some, some more gumbo Boom. left Boom. over. So that was frozen and we heated it up. So, yeah, that was my New Year's Day. And New Year's Eve was very quiet. Christmas Day is a lot of fun. Excellent. There, I there, there, is, there, is, there is some group news of a former person who attends our gatherings. Tyler has moved to a new apartment in Seattle. All right. Ooh. He's on Cheers. his own. He's on his own with no roommate. Excellent. Cheers, Good. Tyler. Before we sign off, cheers, Tyler Manson. Cheers. cheers, everybody. Thank you. It's been fun. Love Wednesday nights. Right. And and roommate.
roommates are like fish. After three days, they stink. <laughs> and on that note, we're going off air. See you later. <laughs>